Hey, good friends and buddies, thanks for tuning into the channel once again. Today I aim to solve the burning question that's on all of your minds. Should you upgrade from the Vaporfly 4% to the next percent? So I've been very lucky to have experience in both of these shoes, the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit and the next percent. And now after several miles, people have asked me to do a direct comparison video between the two shoes. So I've got about 150 miles into this shoe, plus another 35 or so in the Gakuso uh, 4%, and about 30 miles into the next percent. So taking those miles into account, I think I've got enough knowledge there and experience in the two shoes to give you my honest opinions. I've purchased these shoes with my own money. Um, they've not been sent to me for review or anything like that. I've bought them myself, so I'll give you my honest views. So just to get one thing out of the way first, that weight difference between the shoes, people have made quite a big thing about it. I aim to set the record straight on that one. So the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit weighs about 220 grams, that's about 7.8 ounces. I did also measure the Gakuso Vaporfly 4% and it comes in very slightly heavier. It's about 0.1 of an ounce, I think it's about a two gram difference. But it's there, there is a slight difference and as I've always thought, there are some differences between those two versions. The next percent comes in at 7.6 ounces, which is 215 grams. My shoes are size 11 UK, so that's a size 12 US. So a very slight weight difference between the two. I would suggest it's barely noticeable really on foot. If you're able to detect a five gram difference uh, on your feet, then I uh, take my hat off to you. I think it's very much down to the perception of the individual in terms of the comfort of a shoe everybody's going to have something that they're looking for something slightly different so i think with an upper it's very much down to the individual i think you've got to be very honest with yourself when it comes to a race environment are you looking for comfort are you looking for kind of pace speed what is it that you need from the shoe certainly for me when i'm racing i don't mind having a slightly more snug fit slightly lighter weight shoe with a little bit less to it, I'm prepared to sacrifice the comfort a little bit there in terms of pace, but everybody's different. I think you also need to consider the race terrain as well. There's no point wearing one of these sort of super speedster shoes if you're going to go out racing on gravel and on rocks and mud. It's just no point. You need something that's going to work for you in those circumstances. So in terms of that fit and feel, certainly the upper on the Vaporfly 4% is very thin. It's very breathable. I would suggest that we don't really know in terms of durability yet. I know a lot of people have already put masses of miles into this shoe. I am gonna mainly use it for tempo stuff and for racing. I'm not just gonna go out and trash it straight away. But up to now, it seems durable enough. I haven't had any major issues with it and I haven't heard any real horror stories out there on the internet of other runners who've been wearing the shoe for loads more miles than I have having any problems. One of the big things that people have made out with the next percent is it's got this vapor weave upper, expels water much quicker. I want to discuss that for a few moments. In the past, I've raced with the Zoom Fly Flyknit on a beach environment, so very cold, lots of moisture, loads of sand, and that shoe took on masses of water. It started to expel some of that water towards the end of the race, but it certainly held onto it within the Flyknit upper. There wasn't really any opportunity for the water that had been soaked up by my socks to escape out of the Flyknit, because the Flyknit kind of just holds onto the water and it continues to kind of take it in as you're running along those wet surfaces. Again, I use the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit for a very wet and windy race in Sherbourne, a 10K road race. By the end of the race, the Flyknit upper was completely saturated. As the race progressed, my socks were completely saturated. They absorbed loads of water. That was kind of coming from the Flyknit upper. So certainly a bit of a disadvantage in terms of the upper here. Although you've got no control over whether it rains. Sometimes you can look at a weather forecast and see what it's going to be like. In the UK, it's very changeable. Sometimes the weather can be great and then it can just deteriorate really quickly. So, I mean, you could go crazy thinking about, you know, weather conditions all the time. You could go completely mad, lose your mind. You know. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, I think it's a bit of a red herring. Yes, the vapor weave upper is gonna vent the water quicker, but if your sock and the insole and the inside of the shoes wet anyway, what difference is it gonna make? you've got a five gram difference between the two shoes. 
Yes, I know there are other differences. I'm going to talk about those in a moment. I think if your foot's going to get wet, if the sock's wet, if the insole of the shoe is also wet, that's still going to increase the amount of water that you're kind of carrying on your person. So I don't think it's a massive reason to go out and buy the Vaporfly Next Percent. Moving on to the lacing system now. The Vaporfly 4% Flyknit had these little loops on each side of the forefoot and some people kind of complained about that, that they couldn't really get an appropriate lockdown. I think it's a little bit down to sizing sometimes. I've never had that problem, got to be honest. I've always tightened the shoe, not overly tight, but I've never had a problem with the that sort of heel slippage at the back. The only single problem I've ever had with the 4% Flyknit was in the Gakuso model where I ran in the Heron Half Marathon and towards the end of the race, I started to have some pain over the top of my forefoot, probably because I'd laced the shoe too tight for that race. By about an hour and 10, hour and 15, something like that, uh, my foot had expanded a little bit and I had a bit of pain. But that's my fault, it's not the shoe. Just another comment on the upper of the 4%. It does have some give, the Flyknit really does give a little bit and certainly over a few initial runs, it starts to kind of shape and mold a little bit to the shape of your foot. I have to comment here that I think the introduction of this offset lacing system on the next percent is a big, big improvement. This certainly moves the problem away from that forefoot area. You can get a nice lockdown and the only real pressure point at all is just here uh, around by the ankle. You know, I like offset things. I've collected a load of offset guitars. So offset things clearly work for me. I think the changes to the heel area of the shoe as well with these uh, foam pads at the very back have improved that kind of lockdown. You don't need the level of tightness that you did before with the lacing. Moving on to stability. I do recall a host of runners um, purchasing the Vaporfly 4% and then complaining about the stability of the shoe. It is a very, very narrow shoe. You can see here in the arch section, it's incredibly narrow. It's not gonna be a shoe that everybody can use. Other people commented about the durability. I mean here, 150 miles, this one's got loads left in it yet. Yeah, it might be discolored, but I've taken care of this shoe, made sure to look after it, and I'll get loads more out of this yet. I'm using this one now for tempo runs really in training when I want a bit of an extra boost. Um, this is the shoe I'm kind of grabbing for. But it's got loads left. Aesthetically, it looks pretty good as well. It's hold the color. One thing I've noted, a bit of a strange thing, probably you may be able to see this on camera, but the laces have kind of faded somewhat. They've kind of turned to a slight pink color. I don't know why, who knows? I want a pink shoe anyway. If they release a pink version of the next percent, I'm getting it. Oh, the Be True, Is, have you seen that? The Be True uh, Vaporfly Next Percent, it's beautiful. I had the chance to get that shoe, what a fool. Why didn't I get it? Why didn't I get it? Uh, I think you have to have a certain perception uh, about this shoe. You have to have a certain kind of viewpoint. This is a racing shoe. This is not a Nissan Micra or you know your family saloon. This is the shoe you grab for when you wanna go fast, uh, when you're low to the ground. Actually, you're not low to the ground in this shoe at all. You're really high off the ground. That analogy just doesn't work. This is a light, minimal shoe, aim for pace, aim for high speed racing. It's not a Nissan Micra or a family saloon car that's made to absorb biscuit crumbs and grubby children. You know, it's like a Maserati. It's aimed for speed, for flying down the home straight, smashing your personal bests, finishing those races hardly out of breath, whilst your family and friends are left in awe at your incredible athletic ability. back to the real world. That side, this shoe didn't do corners very well, and I grant you, it can be a little bit unstable in the heel. The 10 mil heel to toe drop on this shoe did leave people a little confused as the shoe is incredibly springy in nature in terms of the midsole foam. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm kind of bouncing. I'm not wearing those right now. That heel to toe drop did confuse people a little bit and left them feeling a little bit unstable. I think probably due to the springy nature of the Zoomax foam. To remedy that, the next percent has even more Zumax foam. But this time the drop of the shoes adjusted to eight mil, so it's not quite as extreme as the 4%. I think the thinking behind that is adding more foam to this sort of forefoot, midfoot area, which is predominantly where people are gonna land. But that aside, loads and loads of people towards the end of a race, certainly a marathon or a half, probably ending up here, this area.
this area here. Key word, word of the day, honesty. If you're pushing the pace, the likelihood is you're gonna end up in this sort of mid forefoot area here. And that's where that increase in foam has occurred. Nike have got that spot on really. So what's really happened, they've increased the amount of foam. So the weight's probably edged up a little bit, but then they've included this new vapor weave upper and that's bringing it down a little bit. So we've still got a reduction in weight, but more of that lovely Zumex foam. Oh, Zumex, we love you. Mm. Oh, hi, good friends and buddies. So moving on to traction, the 4% rubber, rubber section here in the forefoot, sort of midfoot area, can be slippery when you hit any sections of mud. And this is magnified as well, if you're perhaps taking a turn, taking a corner, and you hit a little section of mud. I've almost gone flying into a hedge before on a 5K road race wearing these bad boys um, when I hit some mud. So something to bear in mind. The 4% outsole shown to be pretty durable over time. I know this is saying that's kind of shocked people in terms of the wear, the very speedy, very quick wear of this shoe. I haven't really experienced that. Um, Mine have been really great, in fact. I've worn this on all sorts of different races, all sorts of different conditions, and I've not really had a major problem with it. I don't feel like this shoe has been poor value in any way. Up to this point, the next percent has shown good traction here in the forefoot area. Uh, certainly an improvement, and I feel that with that wider kind of surface area here, certainly the width is, is increased from the 4%, that it provides a lot more stability and better traction. Certainly that area in the rear and the heel section of the shoe shows good traction as well. Very impressed with the durability and traction of the next percent thus far. So which of these do I recommend that you should buy? Well, there's a few considerations. Let's kind of sum it all up. Very much depends on your budget, really. The increased foam in the midsole of the next percent is certainly going to aid in reducing fatigue over distance. The upper of the next percent is certainly lighter than on the Flyknit version, but that weight difference that you're gaining is being offset, really, by the increase in the ZoomX foam. I think something that has to be considered is the current world record for the marathon is held by Kipchoge, obviously wearing the Flyknit upper on the next percent midsole, or at least that's as close as we can get to that at present. The next percent and the four percent are both narrow shoes, as you can see here, but I would suggest that the next percent has got a little bit more surface area there for landing if you have a wider foot. Durability, probably still a bit unknown yet on this shoe until more data, more views and opinions come in from other runners. But we certainly know that the 4% is pretty durable in terms of its outsole, midsole, and you'll get a, at least a couple hundred miles out of this one. So is it worth the £30 extra? I would suggest at present, yes, I think it is worth £30 more. I think you're going to get a little bit more performance out of it. I do think that over time, the next percent outsole is going to provide better durability than the 4% Flyknit version. I'll give you my continued updates as I utilize the next percent for more races and for more training. Okay, that just about sums up my comparison today between the Vaporfly next percent and the 4%. Which should you buy? Well, I think it's down to you a little bit. How much are you prepared to spend on a racing shoe? A great racing shoe, well, both of them are really, but how much are you prepared to pay? Is it really worth that value? It's a lot of money, I've got to be honest. For a shoe, it's an incredible amount of money. Are you gonna get a lot out of it? I think any runner can really get something out of the next percent. I think people with a wider foot aren't gonna get so much out of the 4% as they would the next percent. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video, good friends and buddies. Please hit that subscribe button, it's free of charge, and hit that bell for notifications of when new videos have been launched. Be sure to comment below with your comments about the next percent and also the 4% Flyknit, and you can comment about the original 4% if you would like. What are your experiences with them? Have you felt that they're good value? Have they given you some personal bests? Or have they been a little bit of a letdown? Please let me know in those comments. Don't forget to hit the like button, show me you've been here and you enjoyed the video. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.